one, doing a little bit of foraging for wild garlic. Video two, we've gone and done a bit of carving from uh, Whitley, from what we had in the woods. And uh, today, we've got bass fishing in accuracy. Okay, so one of my favourite things about bass fishing uh, is how light you can make it, how easy it is to, uh, to tackle, make a roaming with your gear really easy. Uh, you see all sorts of uh, types of match fishing and stuff like that. They go fishing, they've got books and rocks and stuff, they got trolleys, they got bags, they got boxes, holdalls, uh, all sorts. Match fishing, I've got everything I need right here. So uh, it's super light, super transportable, and they can cover a lot of ground quite easily uh, with minimal effort. Okay, so before I take you through any of the tackle, uh, something uh, quite important to get right before you go in anywhere fishing especially sea fishing, is uh, to get your, your safety equipment right. So um, these boots don't look particularly appealing, especially in shorts. Uh, they look a bit of uh, a bugger in them. But these boots, especially designed boots for rocks. So on the bottom of these boots, they're called rock hoppers, and uh, they really make uh, going to some of the places that I go to uh, that bit more, that bit safer uh, by having these spikes on the bottom. So, uh, so these are super mouldable, they fit around the consoles of, of any rock that you stand on. These spikes dig in to give you almost perfect grip no, no matter where you're standing. So uh, I'm going to go on a lot. Uh, as the tide's dropping now, a lot of the rocks are going to be stood on. Just 15 minutes before I'm standing on them would have been underwater. Underwater as well, it's, it's building up algae on it because it's in shallow water. Uh, and then as soon as it, it uncovers, I'm stood on it, casting my lures in. Not particularly watching where my feet are, it's really easy to slip. Uh, so, the, um, so these uh, can be a real lifesaver and um, saved me a lot of falls over the years. Uh, another thing to get right is your outer clothing. No matter what underclothing you've got right, if your outer clothing isn't right, it's all going to get ruined as soon as that, any rain. So a uh, half decent waterproof coat at, at the minimum. Uh, yeah, I spend quite a lot of money on mine, but uh, but as long as you've got a good waterproof coat, uh, it covers you, uh, and it makes getting out uh, that that much easier. You don't have to plan too much ahead, thinking, oh, there's uh, a shower forecast at one o'clock or something like that. Bring yourself a good waterproof coat, and you're covered no matter what happens. One thing specific to this type of fishing that I'm going to be doing today is a good set of polarized glasses. Okay, so I'm not wearing these to try and look cool, even though I do. Uh, I'm wearing these uh, for when I'm lure fishing, you can see um, it's to take the glare off the surface of the water. Taking that glare off means you can potentially see fish that are coming up to your lure before it hits it. It gives you uh, that little bit of uh, better reaction time. So uh, polarised glasses when you're fishing in clear water, like this, especially surface fishing like I'm going to be doing today, uh, it's really important that you get a, a good pair of polarised glasses. Okay, rods and reels. You can bore anybody to death with the amount of rods and reels that I've got. I've got more rods and reels than most tackle shops. Today, I brought one rod and I brought one reel. That's, that's plenty. You can only carry one at a time, especially when you're lure fishing. It's not like beach casting where you can have two, three, even four out at the same time. Today, I've got um, a Savage Gear spinning rod. It's seven foot seven. It casts nine to thirty-two grams. Uh, it's Black Savage, uh, and, and this is what I'm going to be using uh, to throw the lures today. Coupled uh, with that today, I've got um, uh, a Dial Black Gold 3000 size reel, and, uh, and this re reel is loaded up with 20 pound braid. Uh, braid is really important when you're lure fishing because you want to be in direct contact with that lure all the time. Mono's got too much, too much stretch, too much flex, uh, and, and and you don't want none of that when you're trying to um, fish directly from rod tip to lure um, over 60 or 70 yards when you're casting that, that that little bit of stretch can mean the difference between hooking up on a bite and missing it and there's how I set it up Probably better than 
than 10. But um, that's just what I had to hand today, uh, setting uh, when I was coming out this morning. Um, I could have gone to the tackle shop and uh, got some, it took another half an hour out and you know, I didn't want to miss any more of the tide. So uh, £10 for a carbon, uh, so I'm using today. Right, I've got a brilliant knot to, uh, to show you there for uh, tying uh, fluorocarbon onto braid or mono onto braid, either way. Uh, this is the best knot I know to keep uh, the knot size right down to a minimum uh, and keep that knot strength because braid will cut through mono. Uh, it, it's simple, so you have to do a special knot uh, to stop uh, the, the two different materials uh, wearing against each other. So that's how I do it. Um, start off, I just make a loop, uh, just pinch over the top uh, of the mono. You can see all I'm doing is simply folding it over. No knot, uh, anything in that. Okay, get your braid and you uh, send it straight through the middle of, uh, of that fold. This braid now has to go round seven or eight times okay leaving a gap at the top which we need to thread back through that later on so seven times consecutively going down 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 okay now i want to go seven turns back up overlaying that that first layer Okay, so now I'm at the point where that's wrapped in, round seven times, back round seven times on itself, and out again, same direction through that loop, okay? Wet that, pull that on itself. Okay. And those two knots perfectly tied up, butted up to each other, you know, pulling on that, pretty tight, and that ain't going anywhere, remember it is only a £10 line, and um, you can trim that back a little bit more. I always like to keep a little bit of a tag on, just in case anything slips, even a tiny bit. Right, on the opposite end, some people like to use these little clips, so it's a swivel with a little um, adjusting clip, or well, not adjusting it, it, it pops off at the end. I can't stand these clips, I don't even know why they're in my box to be honest. But that, but that is one way of um, going on to the end of your line and connecting up to your lure. What I find with these is the minute you uh, hook a big fish, that will just, as soon as I've got a bit of pressure on it, tend to snap out okay that one isn't pulling and uh, it seems pretty strong but trust me I've had it uh, at least three or four times now but I've lost uh, uh, a good fish and then this has come back on its own and that's been broken open and I've just been left like that um, so so with these not for me what I like what I like to use is uh, 
just one of these standard Gemini clips. Basic knot on this. In one, two, three, four, five times round, back on itself, in through your hole. Appreciate I'm teaching a lot of people to suck eggs here. I bet there's a lot of people out there. You'd like to know anyway. Now for the business end. I've got one of these uh, Pachenko style Savage Gear um, plugs. I like this one personally, I've got quite a few bass on it. Um, still got a, a clip from last time so all I do attach that on okay so I've got about 14 inches of uh, 10 pound uh, fluorocarbon and that lack is a little bit of uh, a buffer in case the bass shakes his head that tiny little you know that that two inches of stretch there uh, can make the difference especially when you're fishing with uh, with this mono um, and I've got my clip straight onto this uh, the surface popper. The way these surface poppers work, um, you can see on uh, on the front end of, uh, of this, it's quite a big, kind of like a um, uh, concave kind of face to it. So that that there is the part that's pulling through the water, and that's the part that makes all that disturbance, makes that popping noise as it's going through the water. So I'm going to be uh, working this. On the, uh, as soon as you stop retrieving it, I'll actually stop. Uh, but I'll be trying to work it through the water uh, best I can. Some people call it the walk the dog action. Uh, I just like to uh, work it, um, add as much life into it as I can uh, by using the rod tip. Okay, let's have a go at catching some fish. And this is all the weed that I was talking about before, where I said how important it was to get these rock hopper boots. You can see all this here. Obviously, the water comes right up, uh, up to there. All this is therefore covered in in uh, slime a lot of the time and weed. Um, so these rock hopper boots really stop um, stop you injuring yourself. So really important. is not a place you ever want to fall in. See ya, come here. It's a hole in the wall. See ya, come on. Fall in there, you're dead. If you fall in that, you would never get back out. Schools of fish here, thousands of fish there. And every now and then, a few of them get too close to uh, to this this rush. And you see them; they start, they can't keep up against the tide. The next minute, straight round, and they're gone in there. And that's why so many fish wait at these outlets, waiting uh, at the other side. And as soon as those fish fall through. The bass are there waiting to take those uh, those small bait fish. Incredible. Okay, so I'm still a little bit early for this tide. Um, I want to be fishing about two and a half hours after high water, by which point that water is pushing this way into that um, sort of flow point. We'll be flowing that way. What I'll be doing is I'll be casting my lure straight into the turbulent water and it's going out in front of me. And I'll be trying to hold it back and try and retrieve it slowly. So it's pushing its, uh, the head of the lure straight into the current and hopefully on retrieve while, the, uh, while I'm retrieving this way 
uh, the mass are going to be on the periphery and on, on the edge of, uh, of all that turbulent water, uh, ready to take um, a, a fish uh, that they're expecting to be coming through for an that way. So like I said, all the fish that, that we've seen here, they're getting uh, caught in this water and thrown out that way. In about an hour's time when the tide turns, just when I want to be fishing, those same prey fish from there will be getting thrown out this way. Uh, and all those predator fish that are waiting, uh, hopefully going to get caught by my lure. Right, we're going to now. Okay, so now the tide's turned. It's obviously going uh, the right way this time. Turbulent water to my right there. So I'm going to cast it in and we let it trot down uh, right to the edge of uh, that sort of flat calm water you can see in front of us. Um, and then I can start to retrieve it and switch it out the way. That's what you want to avoid when you're getting uh, when you cast it now. It's a tangle around the travel hooks. So to see that you've got to try and cast the lure really straight. Um, so not snatching it at the lure when you cast it on the big jerk, not jerking it. Nice progressive cast and the lotion uh, cast nice and straight in the air, get a land straight, which means there's no chance of uh, all, all this line tangling under the, the trebles. Some more. So I've only got about 45 minutes before I've got to head home. Alright, this, this 
this is the problem I'm having. We, 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 well, we, every chance I get. We've got a pound of weed and we struggle up every time. Okay, so that's all I got time for today. Uh, I've really enjoyed catching uh, these bass today, uh, especially on the lures. It's even better to catch uh, any fish on a lure instead of baits. Um, been really good fun. I hope you've enjoyed the video too. Uh, if you if you've liked the video, please please press like uh, and subscribe to see any of my future videos. Uh, got loads more in uh, in line. So uh, stay tuned and see you on the next video. Thank you for watching.